be smiling. Please don't tear me down when you see God bless me. Please don't wear a frown. It was that it came my way more than a conqueror through Jesus. Yeah. When you see me smiling, the devil, the devil is busy. Please don't tear me down when, when you, you see God bless me. Please don't wear a frown. It was through my triumphant when he came my way. More than a conqueror, true Jesus. Yes. I'm here to say this. God is not an author of confusion. In the book of Hebrew, chapter 13, he said, fear nothing. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He said, be confident when you speak. I want you to declare, I will not fear what man can do to me. If you see a pastor limping and he was not that way that's his testimony if you see someone before stand before you and they have some flaws and that's not how they were born it doesn't matter how they get it it is to help someone else so if God can allow me to go through all these things and bring me to stand here today, it means that he's not done with you yet. Many of you, your life is perfect. Your, your criminal record is cleaner than Jesus' prayer shawl. You know, mine too. If you Google me nowadays, all you're going to see is El Shaddai. Go on your phone and Google my name. And all you will see today is El Shaddai prayer tower. My faith conquered my fear. So if you are going through an issue with your faith, it's time for you to use your faith to paralyze your fear. God will allow it to happen. You just have to put in the legwork. Don't let anyone tell you you can't do it. There were people who told me I can't do it. I won't get papers here. That man said Bush sent for people like him to. I don't know if he's still here. Because I prayed some prayers. I pray that God move him back to where he came from. If you're going to threaten me physically, I'm going to fight you spiritually. So this is to let some of you know maybe you're going through some physical issue don't deal with it in the physical go to the lord in prayer and he will fix it for you that day when i walk in that room i was confident the bible said daniel went into prison into that lion's den because a law was made for what he did i did something i caught that man and there is a law against it. I pay my dues. I went to jail. I got counseling. I spent a lot of money for it because I didn't have no papers. I was undocumented and go to jail. So it's not just getting married and go to jail. I was undocumented. So God is using my story to tell somebody out there. Whatever you're going through, it's not over. That day when I was walking out of the immigration office. And we enter the elevator. It's in Miami. And I felt the presence of God. A Chinese couple walking. And I begin to minister to them. I didn't know what, what I was doing. Because the lawyer was standing next to me. And my then husband was standing next to the lawyer. And he said look at her. She's going crazy now. Because they gave me the passport back. So God was showing me that. This is the beginning of your journey. I begin to jump up in that elevator and ask the lady. I said, do you know God? I forgot where I was. That was the first time I ministered the word of God. 
I was not baptized yet, but I was in the elevator ministering to the couple. The car broke down that we had, so the lawyer had to pick me up and take me back home. And back in those days, $500 was a lot of money. And I live in Fort Lauderdale. And she had to pick me up in Fort Lauderdale and take me to Miami. I felt like I, you see, it's not regular immigration interview you when you have court case. So even when it was time to get the citizenship, I was denied. And I went back again. You see, you might have been denied some things. It's time for you to try again. You might have been denied some things, but I'm here to let you know it's time for you to try again. God is saying, try again. Because a law was made to put Daniel in prison. For the lions to eat him. But when he came out of the lions, then alive, another law was made. That God was real. I don't know what you're going through. But I want you to know, God is real. And he said, I'm not deaf. My ear is not deaf. I'm listening. And my hands are not short to bless you. My little foolish story is nothing but a small thing in the sight of God. God is getting ready to do big things in your life. All you got to do is believe. And don't let fear prevent you from going to where God wants you to be. Things might be looking rocky. Things might be rough. Things might be tough. The going may be rough. And the hills may be hard to climb. But Jesus Christ is there to take you to the next level. Nothing that I have gone through was able to stop me from doing what God said. So God make a way where there seemed to be no way. Today it's not about you. It's all about Jesus Christ. In the book of Psalm chapter 23... David said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear any evil. Why? Because God is with you. When God is with you, you don't fear. Stop worry. Tell somebody, don't let, don't let stress destroy you. Let not your heart be troubled. My God. Psalm 27 again, it reminds us, David said, the Lord is your light and your salvation. Who shall you fear? Beware of people that put fear in you. That tell you you can't do it. Beware of them. All things are possible when you believe. All things. Not some things. All things. God will make a way for you. So whatever your story is, don't let fear prevent you from overcoming. The devil wants you to give up. But I came today to let you know, don't give up. I make a decision when I was in jail. And I kept my end of the bargain. So there's nothing that can take God from me. I found him when I was at a low place. The money that they had to pay to bail me out of jail was my own money when I was in Florida. But God allowed the people that make their promises to keep their end of the bargain as well. So it doesn't matter what you, they, were, they promise you. Whatever your name is written on, declare it shall be yours. Don't allow fear to make you feel like you're too small for it. There is nothing too small for God's people. Don't allow anyone to tell you that you can't do it. You can do it. Because he's in control. And God has never lose a fight. Let him fight your war. I stand here boldly to tell you that immigration man was never in the building. You threatened me. Okay. So I'm going to talk to my daddy. I set Jesus on him. You threatened me. You, 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 you offended God. 
What did the Bible say? Anybody who would do anything to one of my children. It would have been better if they tie a stone around their neck and jump over a cliff. So don't worry. God have your back. Leave it to him. Don't let fear destroy your blessings. The devil will tell you it's not possible. But God said it is possible. You just got to believe. Somebody clap for Jesus. We are going to pray. We are going to pray. We can't have this type of testimony and don't pray. Somebody, baby, in your family that are going through hardship, that they said that person will never make it. There may have been some immigration issue, and you think it's not possible. I'm here to let you know it is possible. God will always find a way. When there seems to be no way. So we pray today. In the name of Jesus Christ. That whatever the situation is. It will be well with us. It will be well with our children. It will be well with our parents. It will be well with our unborn grandchildren. It will be well, oh God, in our family. Oh God, we pray that fear will never damage our children. Fear will never damage the people that love us. Oh God, we pray that our destiny helper will not be filled with fear, but the spirit of boldness. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray right now. We pray right now, oh God. And we come against that spirit of fear. You said you did not give it to us according to the word of God. 2 Timothy chapter 2, 17. You said you did not give us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of sound mind. And Lord, we thank you for what you have done. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Somebody clap for Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Fear not. Fear will never take control of our life. We know that where, faith li where fear lies, fear faith lies also. We've been struggling from the day we were born. We believe in the things that we see, even believe in what people have spoken over our life. But today we know that God says, fear not. Now, if we're holding on to God, there is so many things in our life that we're fearing because things may not look like what you think it should look like, or the words that has been spoken over your life Things may seem like it's not going that way, but we read many stories. We've read story about Adam. We read story about Abraham. We read story about Moses. We read story about even Joseph. And just like Pastor Ratigan said, we read about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We read about Daniel. And we know even while Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was going through what they were going through, they never lost faith. They held on to the faith. Fear wasn't even present in their life because they know who the God they serve. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego says, even though you have put me in this fire furnace, I am going to hold on to my God. I will never bow down to you. I will never bow down to you. Daniel did not say, oh, I'm not going in the fire furnace. He went because he know, just like Pastor Rat Ratigan says, when the immigration man was saying no, Daniel no, that God was going to say yes because he fasted and prayed. So see, we have to exercise our faith by fasting and praying. We have to believe that when we're going through certain situations, 
through fast and prayer that God will see us through. Because we know there is a man that we may not be able to see in this physical realm. But we know that he's with us because if we all stand here today and testify what God has brought us through, trust me, we will be here all day. So if we know that we have been through struggles before and God has bring us thus far, then we know that he has greater things for us that is on the way because he says our latter days will be greater than our former days. So we have to prepare for the former day by holding on to our faith. Amen. I want to welcome everyone that is here. I welcome everyone that is online. I salute you this morning with the love of God. I pray that the word that went forth, that you were blessed. I pray that you will be a blessing one to someone and to tell them the good news of God, to tell them your testimony, because God says we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. But testimony will bring people closer to him because of what we've been through. We don't go through things for us. It's not for us. It's so that we could help somebody else when they're going through. We could tell them about the goodness of the Lord and what he has done for us. And then they will see if, if, if I went through it and I'm right where I am, then I too could be an overcomer. Amen? Because we are overcomer. Because God said, I've overcome the world and we're children of God. So we, have, we are overcomers. Amen? I welcome everyone. Is there any new visitors here today? I just want you guys to stand, say your name, and say who invited you. All right. Good morning, everybody. Um, here's John. Miss Bailey, Sister Bailey. That's my mother. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We welcome you, Dejon. We welcome you. Good morning. I'm Cassandra. I was invited by Sister Debbie. Welcome, Cassandra. Hello, everyone. I'm Kimberlyn, and Sister Gwendolyn is my mom. Welcome, Kimberly. Welcome. We welcome you guys. Thank you guys for fellowshipping with us this morning. And thanks for everyone that brought them. God will reward you for bringing them. Amen? Amen. Well, you guys know that we're in the month of March. And the conversation is coming up in Jamaica on May 26th to the 28th. So, if you guys are watching, the convocation is May 26th to the 28th. You are invited. You need to get prepared. You need to get your tickets. You need to get your Airbnb or wherever you're staying. You just need to put it all into perspective because we need to go to Jamaica and tear down Babylon. We need to let them know that there is a God that is still alive and well, and he's doing amazing things. So we have to leave here, get prepared, and go and do what God called us to do. Amen? Amen. Well, listen, if anybody was led to sow a seed, you guys can... Sow a seed through Cash App, Zelle, or PayPal. The information for Cash App is 860-634-8557. Again, the Cash App information is 860-634-8557. At this time, we'll be collecting our offering. Amen. Brother Devin, can you please sing a song? I've got my mind made up and I won't turn back cause I want to see my Jesus someday. I've got my mind made up and I won't turn back 
For I want to see my Jesus someday. I've got my mind made up, and I won't turn back. For I want 